Welcome to the Unraveling Scriptures channel. Do you happen to know the origins of languages? Who taught them? Where did they come from? How were they transmitted to all peoples of humanity? It is interesting to know that in the past there was an imposing tower that reached the heavens. The story of the Tower of Babel is one of the briefest and most significant passages found in the Bible. Why did the people of that generation decide to build a tower? What was the purpose behind your actions? And why was God not pleased with that? But what happened next was different from what happened to the previous generation, such as the flood. God did not choose to destroy them, but took a unique measure. He decided to change people's language. This biblical narrative, as I mentioned earlier, is recorded in the book of Genesis. Today, I'm going to share with you the story of the majestic Tower of Babel, erected by a man named Nimrod. He was known for his wickedness in the eyes of God and his audacity in defying the Creator himself. If you are already a subscriber, we appreciate your support. Leave a like, as this encourages us to continue producing weekly, scripture-based videos for you. However, if you are not subscribed yet, I invite you to watch our video until the end. If it's relevant to you, consider subscribing to our channel so you don't miss out on upcoming content. Come with us in another content on our channel. Throughout human history, an imposing tower rose to the heavens. In this context, a man named Nimrod challenged divine authority. He united the peoples that multiplied after the flood, descendants of Shem, Ham and Japheth. Nimrod, son of Cush and descendant of Ham, somehow managed to unify them to build something that defied God. The name Nimrod, derived from Aramaic and Hebrew, carries relevant meanings. In Hebrew, it refers to rebellion, to the one who rebels against God. Already in Aramaic, the word Gabaron is associated with exaltation, one who rises and self-exalts. Therefore, Nimrod means both, one who rebels, and, one who exalts himself, reflecting the defiant nature of this character. As we reflect on the meaning of the name Nimrod, we can see that he was a man who exalted himself and rebelled against God, characteristics common to the enemy of mankind, Satan. The Tower of Babel was located in Mesopotamia, the region where Nimrod built several cities, including Akkad, in the land of Shinar or Shurnir. Now, let's explore the meaning of the name Babel, which derives from the ancient Assyrian, Babel, or Babel, or simply, Babel. This name means, Door of El, or, Way of El, referring to a very old Sumerian term, Babalu, or, Babi Ilu, which also has the same meaning of, Door of Il, or, Door to God. As we explore the Phoenician or Hebrew context, we discover that the term, Babel, means, confusion. This tells us the evil plan behind the construction of this imposing building. Interpretive speculation suggests that Nimrod wished to challenge God himself, face El himself, hence the name, Tower of Babel. This name symbolized the path towards El, which means God in Semitic languages, or to literally challenge and invade the heavenly realm, the kingdom of heaven. The Midrash reports that during the construction of the tower, when someone asked another for a brick, something they were producing, this brick would pass from hand to hand and, in the end, would fall and break on the ground. People would start crying and wailing saying, Oh my God! We lost a brick! On the other hand, when someone fell and died while building the tower, they would say, Look, another one died. Let's replace it. We cry for bricks, but what about people? Would they be crazy? People without sanity, I can guarantee you not. God doesn't want to tell us the story of lunatic people, people with problems. What do we have to learn from them? So we're talking about smart people, who have big drama, essential questions. And they try to answer them through this construction, this place where they are. So, the Bible says that when they got together in this place and started producing bricks, it is interesting that in the land of Babel, at that time, the stones were not strong so they knew that, as the stones were not strong, they would need to make bricks. So they used clay as raw material and started production. In other words, the Bible tells us that there is a technological advance here. 
The question is, will this technological advance be used to for good or for evil? But what would have motivated Nimrod to devise this plan? Was he a kind of antichrist? It is important to emphasize that Nimrod did not become a powerful ruler for nothing among the peoples of Ham, Japheth, and Shem. Great-grandson of Noah, son of Cush, who was in turn the son of Ham, and they were all involved in building the Tower of Babel. For a purpose, you get the idea. Suddenly, everyone came together with one goal, and they argue about this purpose. And here is something quite intriguing. On the one hand, it is perceived that they are afraid of being scattered by God. They want to stay all together in the same place. Initially, this sounds very positive. At the same time, what do they say? Let's build a tower. A tower that reaches the heavens. And so, let's go, build our name. An extremely deep explanation is needed to understand the Bible, not superficially, but profoundly. Pay close attention. At Babel humanity is in shock. Why are you in shock? Because they are mortal. Humans used to live a long time. You see, Noah, who survived the flood, died at the age of 950. We know that Methuselah lived a little longer, reaching 969 years. But we see in the Bible countless people who lived 900 years, 800 years. It seemed that life was eternal. And suddenly, they're realizing it's not. It was not only the flood that destroyed people, but also before that. People are baffled. It's not like it is today, where we know that death is inevitable. Death exists in the world. So they ask the big question, if death exists, what is the meaning of life? Why are we here? Then Nimrod who certainly was directly influenced by the fallen angels, coming from the enemy himself, and even by the giants. In other cultures, such as Sumeria, Nimrod is considered a giant in his own right or very close to the fallen angels, possessing great magical power. However, God stopped the construction of the Tower of Babel due to Nimrod's evil plan. The builders of the Tower of Babel were gathered there, and God gave all the builders and people present new languages, since before they all spoke the same language. However, what language was this that all the peoples of the world spoke? In ancient times, there was a common language among all peoples, known as the Adamite language, also called the Enochian language or the language of angels. This language was taught by God to Adam and remained in use until the time of the construction of the Tower of Babel, when God gave different languages. This resulted in confusion among the people present at Babel, as each one began to speak a different language. These peoples were of different origins and were divided into three groups, the Hamites, descendants of Ham, the Semites, descendants of Shem, and the Japhethites, descendants of Japheth. Each group received new languages. It was at that moment that all peoples dispersed to different regions of the world, exploring the continents. But what were the specific languages that God gave to the descendants of Shem, Ham and Japheth, resulting in confusion and stopping the construction of the Tower of Babel? The languages we have today, or at least many of them are believed to be descendants of the languages that originated at the Tower of Babel. Over millennia, languages have evolved and developed due to factors such as accents and other linguistic elements. The oldest languages in the world are considered to be those that were delivered at the Tower of Babel. It is interesting to note that the names of the language families of these languages, or groups of related languages, are called the Hamatosemitic family. This name was given in reference to the descendants of Shem and Ham, who were brothers and sons of Noah, as mentioned in the biblical narrative. Experts adopted this name because of the existing biblical connection with this language family. In addition to the Hamatosemitic family, there are other ancient language families, such as the Indo-European family, which encompasses extremely ancient languages. It is interesting to note that the oldest languages in the world that still exist today, or at least those that remain of the oldest, preserve traces of the Adamite language, that is, the language of angels or Enochian language. The oldest languages in the world that retain remnants of the Adamite language, the language of Adam, include Sumerian, Akkadian, Aramaic, Phoenician, Hebrew, Sanskrit, Greek, Latin, Gaelic, 
among many other languages that are extremely old and carry traces of this primordial language, the first language of humanity. It is true that the Chinese writing of ancient China also goes back to many stories and concepts related to Adam and Eve's Garden of Eden, and even the Flood. It is interesting to note that many ancient beliefs, including within Christianity, address the issue of ancient languages all the way back to Babel, and when they do, they relate to both Almighty God and the human heart and the negative feelings of wanting to rise above everything else. And rebel, as in the case of Nimrod himself. This connection is often seen in ancient rituals of magic and the occult, in which ancient languages are used. These languages are chosen because they go back to rebellion against God, but they also serve as a reminder that God has separated people so that they will not continue to perform such actions. However, it is important to highlight that, within Christianity and spiritual practices focused on God, when an ancient language is used, an approximation with the Adamite language is sought. We have videos about what the world was like before the Flood, which is now appearing for you on the screen, in addition to this playlist from our series, The Origin of Peoples According to the Bible, which will address the divisions of peoples after the events in Babel. Thanks for watching us this far. See you soon.